Today, I'm going to look at the importance of main protective bonding in TT systems. So in TT installations, the distribution companies do not provide a protective earth path back to the transformer. The owner has to install their own electrode, which they connect to their main earthing terminal. So we don't have a low resistance metallic earth return path back to the transformer. We're using the mass of earth, and this earth return path will have a high resistance than a very low ohm metallic return path. So this will increase our earth fault loop impedance, and our disconnection times can rarely be met. This is why on TT systems, it's essential that we have one or more RCDs protecting the installation, because the RCD is beating our disconnection times. This calculation process is explained in another video. I'll put a link to that, but we'll quickly go through it. So what we're trying to find out here is the touch voltage. And the formula for touch voltage is the fault current times the R2 and the RA. This is a formula for a TT system. Our R2 is a CPC from the fault. In this case, it's a kettle. So it's a CPC resistance from the kettle to the main earthing terminal. And our RA is a resistance of our earth electrode back to the transformer. We get our fault current from timesing our voltage by C max, then dividing this number by R1 plus R2 plus RA plus RB. R1 is the resistance or impedance of our line conductor from the RCD to the kettle. Our R2 again is a CPC. RA is the impedance of our electrode and RB is the impedance of the transformer electrode. We do the maths and we get a fault current of 2.1 amps. 2.1 amps is a very low fault current that won't trip the MCB or RCBO so we haven't got our disconnection time. Remember this is earth faults not short circuit faults. This is why we have RCDs for fault protection. We'll get to this. So now we can calculate our touch voltage. And this is a touch voltage with no bonding in place. Or the perspective touch voltage is the voltage that can appear on exposed or extraneous conductive parts during a fault. So the formula UT equals our fault current times the R2 plus RA. And again, the maths 2.1 times 0 0.5 plus 100 equals 211 volts. That is the high touch voltage. If you watch the other videos, you'll see touch voltage doesn't reach this level. And the reason for this high touch voltage is most of the volt drop is in the earth return path. We're getting a very high touch voltage at the fault. And here is the calculation with our bonding in place. The formula for the fault current is still the same. We still got 2.1 amps. The formula for touch voltage is different. When we got bonding in place, you'll notice the earth return path is just the R2. It doesn't include the earth electrode resistance. So we times the fault current by R2. 2.1 times 0 0.5 equals 1.05 volts. And you can see that's a massive reduction in the perspective touch voltage. and goes to show the importance of main protective bonding in TT systems. These figures are from Guidance Note 5 by the IET. As mentioned, the high earth fault loop impedance means that our disconnection times will not be met. This is why we have RCDs on TT systems. If you look in BS7671, it tells us that the maximum disconnection time for TT systems is 0.2 seconds. But when we're testing our RCD, it can operate within 300 milliseconds, which is up to 0.3 seconds. So that doesn't sound right. But if you look at table 41.1, .1, there's a note. Where compliance with this regulation is provided by an RCD, the disconnection times in accordance with table 41.1 relate to prospective residual fault currents being significantly higher than the rated residual operating current of the RCD. And you can see in this table, the higher the fault current, the quicker the device will operate. 
TT systems have always required some form of fault protection. It used to be the voltage operated earth leakage circuit breakers. Then that moved on to RCDs. We're used to RCDs on every circuit now. But it used to be that you had one up front RCD. And obviously that can cause issue with nuisance tripping. If it goes off, you lose power to the whole house. So they had a time delayed RCD rated at 100 milliamps to provide fault protection. You can have an RCD for fault protection and an RCD for additional protection. Fault protection, it's protection against electric shock under a single fault condition. Now additional protection is reducing the risk of electric shock in result of a failure of any of the basic protective measures. So the vast majority of circuits now require this additional protection of a 30 milliamp RCD. And so the requirement for an upfront RCD to provide fault protection is not absolute, but depends on the installation's requirements. But something to bear in mind is, if the consumer unit or distribution board is made of metal, there is potential for that to become live during a fault. We know the protected devices won't operate because it's a TT system, and if there's no RCD, that case could just sit there live. But there's guidance that if the meter tails coming into the consumer unit are in a proper gland and they're double insulated and the tails are secured, there's very little chance of those tails becoming damaged and energising the consumer unit. So upfront fault protection is not necessarily required, but what's definitely needed is the additional protection for the outgoing circuits. The upfront RCD does provide some overall backup protection, but it depends on the installation what is required. That's your TT system. I hope it's been of some interest. And thanks for watching.